For the following two sequences, we want to find the first five terms of both given that u0 equals 10. So looking at the left hand sequence first, we're going to substitute in the value for u0 to find out what u1 is. So u1 is going to equal 0 0.2 times 10 plus 100. And that gives us a u1 of 102. U2, our second term, is going to be 120.4. U3 is going to be 124.08. U4 is going to be 124.816. And U5 is going to be 124.9632. It's important not to round when we're finding our terms. Now, if we look at the right-hand sequence, u1 is going to equal 1.2 multiplied by u0, which is 10 plus 100. And that's going to give us a first term value of 112. For our second term, we're going to do 1.2 times 112 plus 100, giving us a u2 of 234.4. u3 is going to equal 381.28. Substituting u3 into our recurrence relation, u4 is going to be 557.536. And the fifth term in our sequence is going to be found by doing 1.2 multiplied by 557.536 plus 100, giving us a value of 769.0432. Now, if we were to plot n against un, then we would be able to see a pattern in what happens with our terms. So on the left-hand side, if we were going to start at 10 for u0 and plot you would see that the curve tends towards a limit and it would finally reach a value of 125 and would never go above that value. In our second sequence, un plus 1 equals 1.2 un plus 100, we're still starting at the same point on our y-axis at 10, but you can see that the curve is going up exponentially as the value of n increases. So how do we go about determining whether or not a recurrence relation has a limit? So first of all, we're going to construct the formula for a limit. So un plus 1 equals aun plus b is our recurrence relation formula. And if we say that the limit is when un plus 1 and un are both equal to each other, and we can give that the letter L for limit. So we substitute in the letter L on both sides of our equal signs. We've got L equals AL plus B. We need to do some rearranging. So we're going to take away the AL on the right-hand side and take it away from the left-hand side as well. So we get L minus AL equals B. Now we need to take out a common L as a factor. So we've got L upon 1 minus A equals B. And now we want to isolate that limit on its own. So we're going to divide both sides by 1 minus A. And so our limit L is equal to B, our constant term, divided by 1 minus A, where A is our common difference. So if a lies between negative 1 and 1, or we can write it as the modulus of A is less than 1, then there is a limit. So in summary, for a linear recurrence relation, un plus 1 equals A un plus B. If A is between negative 1 and 1, then the recurrence relation tends to a limit. And if the recurrence relation tends to a limit, L, then L equals B over 1 minus A. So let's look at an example. A pesticide is used once a week to control the insects in a garden. It's estimated that the pesticide kills 75% of the insects present. However, every week another 300 appear. We want to write a recurrence relation for the number of insects present. So the pesticide kills 75%, but another 300 appear. 
So that's going to determine what our A and B values are in our recurrence relation. So UN plus 1 is going to equal AUN plus B. A is our common difference. So we're going to start off with 100% and we're going to take away the 75% because the pesticide is decreasing the number of insects and that leaves us with an A value of 25% or as a decimal 0 0.25. So UN plus 1 is going to equal 0 0.25 UN and then as another 300 appear we're going to add on those 300 for our recurrence relation. The start value for this recurrence relation U0 is going to be 0. So now that we have our recurrence relation, we want to know what is the long-term effect on the population of the insects. So if we rewrite our recurrence relation, we've got UN plus 1 equals 0 0.25 UN plus 300. And our start value, U0, is 0. Now, if we compare that to our UN plus 1 equals AUN plus B, the A value is what's important in determining whether or not there's a limit to the sequence. And as A equals 0 0.25, and we know that the condition for there being a limit is that A has to lie between negative 1 and 1. Because A at 0 0.25 does lie between negative 1 and 1, there is a limit for this recurrence relation. So we can find that limit using L equals B over 1 minus A and then substituting in our values. So B is 300 and 1 minus 0 0.25 on our denominator and that gives us 300 divided by 0 0.75 and that gives us a limit of 400. So the long-term effect on the population of insects is the population of insects will never exceed 400 insects because that's the limit of this recurrence relation. Now in this example, a sequence is defined by the recurrence relation UN plus 1 equals KUN plus 2K. And given that the limit of the sequence is 27, we're asked to find the value for K. Now, if we reach a limit, then that means that at some point all consecutive terms will have a value of 27. And this is because the limit of the sequence is 27. And that means that UN plus 1 and UN in our recurrence relation are both going to have that value of 27, which is our limit L. So we can say that UN equals UN plus 1 equals L, which equals 27. And so we can substitute that into our recurrence relation, which was UN plus 1 equals KUN plus 2K. And that gives us 27 equals 27K plus 2K. Now we can collect our like terms together, and that gives us 27 equals 29K. And we want to divide both sides by 29 to isolate K on its own. And that gives us a value of k of 27 over 29. And we can always check to make sure that our answer makes sense because if there's a limit, then k would have to lie between negative 1 and 1, which it does. So our final recurrence relation is un plus 1 equals 27 over 29 un plus 54 over 29. And it's best to leave these values as fractions for accuracy.